nothing could have made him happier. Um, just, you know, it's just, as, as I've often said, when he came from a working class family, nobody had ever, in his family really ever knew a scientist. And he saw, from a very young age, science as a great liberation for him. And because he was a conscientious human being, he, he wanted to be sure that as many people had that chance that he was given to, to have this experience, to follow a pathway in science. So I deeply appreciate it. I deeply appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's a view with God. <laughs> no? Okay, well, in this radio, in this radio show that you were on, you actually uh, mentioned that possibly humans could be uh, surpassed by cockroaches. Uh, oh, that's inevitable. That we go extinct. Of course. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cockroaches and rats and other creatures that uh, had very uh, high survival abilities due to their size and flexibility and resistance to disease and the fact that eat practically anything. And,
that they exist would be exactly at our kind of newborn state of sophistication. I think that's good to be assumptive, not that we're going to meet space-bearing uh, intelligent beings. We're going to say, God, you are so smart. We just, I can't get over you. <laughs> But I, I think the fact that we are so rich, um, but that we actually do something, is a sign of some significant help. And that you know, the idea that we can come to grips with our tininess in the past, know how young we are, that's a sign that we're, we're growing up. To know our
So we'll see once it gets hatched out by the true experts in black hole physics to see if it's uh, uh, if after we think uh, how black a black hole can be. <laughs> Do you think that human life is really the universe trying to understand itself? Well, I'm going to pass that to Anne because that idea, that concept, emerged in the collaborations of Anne and, and Carl Sagan and, 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 their, and their work. So, Anne, why don't you handle that? Thank you, Anne. Um, my favorite line from the original Cosmos series is we are a way for the universe to know itself. Carl was really one of the first people, if not the first, to articulate that notion that molecules given nearly four billion years of cosmic evolution can, can become aware. And uh, I, there was, I loved a line of his, which was, I'm a collection of molecules called Carl Sagan. You're a collection of molecules. Sorry. You're a collection of molecules. That's much better. You're a collection of molecules with another name. You know, there's um, there's a resistance to this idea because for some reason, uh, a lot of people don't feel that matter is sufficiently worthy and noble to attain consciousness. And there's this belief in our civilization that some other force has to do something magical to turn matter into consciousness. I think it's very clear the pathway that matter takes uh, in evolution. And I think it's one of the great, once you start thinking of yourself as a way to know the universe, that separation between you or me and the universe begins to erode and disappear. And in a way, you know, science is displacing us from the center and taketh away, but it also giveth. It also is a way to legitimately feel, without lying to yourself, that you are part of a legacy that stretches back, not only to the beginning of time, but to a relatedness with all life on this planet that is real, as real as anything. All right. Now today is uh, Friday. It's also, you know, big day for other reasons as well. The final day of Chinese New Year. It is also Valentine's Day. And so our final question um, comes from a Twitter follower. Her name is Xiao Chen Tian, and she wants to ask which physics phenomenon in the universe do you think is the most romantic?
many of you want to take photos? Okay, so I'll tell you what we'll do.